praise the Lord. We are excited to have a man of God in our midst who is going to share with us the word of God. He's one of our pastors who is passionate for the Lord. And I know today he has a great package for us. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Shadrach Odom to share with us the word of God. Yeah, praise the Lord Jesus. Yes, we want to thank God for this morning. It's still morning. And for the opportunity to minister to us this, this morning. And this, and this afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to church. Can you clap our hands for Jesus to Jesus for today? It's a privilege to be in church. And someone said it is bad manners not to go to church. Praise the Lord. Because most of the people who complain not to go to church because they are busy, they are actually not very busy. The busiest people are the ones who go to church. They just, they, maybe they just don't plan very well, but I don't think they are too busy for church. And the Bible says we should not give up the habit of fellowship. I thank God for this opportunity to minister to us. My name is Odongo Shadrach. I'm an administrative pastor. And my wife is right there. She's called Daniela. That one there. Daniela. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For most of the people, this is the hardest moment. And for the few people, this is the best moment. I don't know which side you are. Hallelujah. Amen. But we're going to enjoy today. Listening to the word of God. Be expectant. And prepare yourself. So that people may not move forward and leave you behind. Praise the Lord Jesus. As a church, this year we are looking through the kingdom of God. And specifically this month we are looking through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's something that is very important and very key for a believer. I know people have so many words about those days that we celebrate. And today I felt like I have to touch it a little bit. When, when we are reaching the time of these days of Christmas, Easter, there are so many WhatsApp messages that begin to running. Then then others, Facebook Facebook and Twitter, uh, Twitter. Showing to us that we are celebrating something that is not for Christians, actually. Beginning to compare it with some other day, maybe the day someone died. The day that it is the day that uh, Osama bin Laden crashed the White House in US. Or America. It's a day they begin comparing it with so many things. But the truth is, any day something happened. Even the day you were born. You never know, maybe it's the day that demon was thrown on earth. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, don't get scared. Uh, uh, and people say, this, these are not the days. That some of the things happen. They are right and they are true. But, 
we do it to remember because this is not our I mean the calendar of some of these things are not even our calendar. Kubanga e calendar yabwe siye yafe. The Jewish calendar is different from ours. A calendar yaba yonani njaul ya njaul ku yafe. I think the Arabs also have their calendar. Na ba wala buna boba ine ya. For them they watch the moon some of that. Bone batambo mwezo baguja di kwe bintunga bwe bitio. But it is very important. Na yate cha mugaso nyo. For a Christian. O o mu Christian. To remember some of these days. O kujukire na kuzino. Actually most of for our children. They know about the birth of Jesus. Because they celebrate, celebrate Christmas. Praise the Lord Jesus. And most of us we remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because of Easter. So some of these times are very important for us to remember. It reminds us of some things. Praise the Lord Jesus. So that is what we are going to look through this month. Praise the Lord. So don't get scared when someone tells you this is uh, the days that something happened that, that Muhammad met, the, met God. One thing that is important is that you are not celebrating Muhammad. You are not Muhammad. remembering those things they are talking about. For you, you are, you are purposeful in remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and that is what is important for you. Actually, there are some of you who even don't know your death of, date of birth. You just fix any day in the year and then you say, I'm going to celebrate this day. Whether it was a day you were born or not, you just celebrate. Am I lying? It is true, right? Amen. So, uh, we thank God so much for the man of God, uh, Uncle Solomon for last week. God used him to teach us very well about forgiveness. One of the important things that is enveloped in Easter is forgiveness of sin. And he started by talking about the forgiveness of one another. And that was very powerful. And I know those who enjoyed the, who, who, who attended the home cell even digested it more. Thank you so much, Uncle Solomon, for that powerful word. I was personally blessed. And I believe each one of you who are around were blessed. So, so, today, I want to talk about the redemption on the cross. Redemption on the cross. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes, we have a Redemption in Luganda is what? That one. Yes. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're going to talk about the redemption on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I believe God is going to talk to us today. Yeah, and I know after the Easter we shall be talking about the resurrection and other things. There are so many, there are so many that men of God are going to share to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is one story in the death of Jesus that stands out for me and every time I read it I get a new insight I don't know if any of you has ever taken time to read from the arrest of Jesus Christ after his death and resurrection I've tried to read that so, 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 one time I was, I was trying to Search for the words that Jesus spoke on the cross. And there was, 
there were seven words seven statements that he made on the cross you will make you will make research on your own but there is one that stood out for me it was because of a certain man it was because of the certain man who was crucified with Jesus let's turn to the book of Luke chapter number 23 Luke chapter number 23 Luke chapter 23. Luke. If you're there, say amen. Luke, Luke is in the gospel. Is the fourth book in the New Testament. Uh, Luke, He's a third, not a fourth. Luke, third book, book in the New Testament. So go right there. Luke chapter number 23. Amen. If you're there, say amen. Hey, if you're Amen. looking for it, you'll get it when we are reading. <laughs> Verse number 32 Luke, up to 42. Oh, we can read up to 43 actually. 43. The Bible says two other men, two others were who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place called the place that is called in the place that is called the skull. There they crucified him. And the criminals and the criminals, one of his, one on his right hand and another on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they cast a lot to divide his garments. And people stood by. Watching, but the rulers scoffed at him. Saying, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is a Christ, of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. Coming up and offering him shower wine. And saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. Saying, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him. Saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and save us also. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are, we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss, I mean nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, Yes. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered. Yes. Truly, truly, I say to you. Today you will be with me in paradise. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us to understand your word. Speak to us today. 
Let today be somebody's paradise. Let someone reach his paradise today. Let someone get a change in his life today. Let someone meet you today. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. We can clap our hands to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk much about the man one of the criminals that was crucified with Jesus. The one that understood that Jesus is a savior. And he received his redemption there and then. That is why I'm talking about redemption on the cross. Now let me go and bring for you the foundation of redemption in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament when God created man and put man in the garden of Eden. There was this expectation of the relationship to continue. The relationship between God and man. But every relationship demands principles. Every relationship has principles and their rules and regulations. And that is what makes someone belongs to a certain place. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are a Ugandan, there are rules and regulations of Uganda that you have to follow. In your families, there are principles that everyone has to follow. Because that is what keeps the relationship moving. In every tribe, every clan, there are principles that people identify with. The same thing for the relationship between God and man to continue. There was a principle that God gave man. He said you may eat of every tree. But there is this tree in the middle of the garden that you are not supposed to touch. But because of rebellion, man ate the fruit that God had told him not to eat. So that is what generally we call the fall of man. So that sin led to the division between God and man. There was a separation of the relationship between God and man. But the only thing that can bring back the relationship is well, uh, that term is called redemption. For someone to be redeemed or brought back to God. But there are processes that lead to that redemption. So when we look in the garden of heaven, when God found man and man was naked, God had to cover man. We begin to see the forgiveness already taking place. And the redemption of man. God had to kill an innocent animal. And remove the hide, the skin, and cover with the man's nakedness. Skin. And cover with the man's nakedness. So there we begin to see redemption already happening. But an innocent animal was slaughtered, was killed. Because of the sin of man. And from that time, from that day, the only thing that Pays a price for man's sin. Is a sacrifice. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Is a sacrifice. Yes, sadaka. So when we see in the Old Testament, we begin to see the sacrifice already happening. And when we go to the book of uh, of, 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 of Exodus, when the children of Israel were leaving the land of Egypt, in Exodus chapter number 12, the Bible tells us about the Passover. Where an animal, a lamb without blemish, had to be slaughtered to save the children of Israel. So that when the spirit of death is passing by, they are going to be secured. So the blood was shed and then the blood was put on the doorpost. And that was a sacrifice of an innocent animal. Because sin leads to death. But God tried in the Old Testament that every time a man sins something dies on behalf. Every time the man sins there was a sacrifice made. Every time the man sins there was a bloodshed because God was redeeming man to himself. But because man is rebellious man continued to sin. When we see in the book of Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 Leviticus, Leviticus in Luganda. Levi. Uh -huh, that hey. one. Mm. Leviticus, when we see chapter number 17, verse 11, the Bible says that the life of every flesh is in the blood. I said, and I have given you on the altar for the atonement of your sin. For the atonement of your sin. I've given the blood on the altar for the atonement of your sin. So that means there should be atonement that can redeem you. Because sin leads to death. Paul wrote it in the book of Romans. That for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. So that is why when a man sin, there should be redemption. But in the process of redemption, there is sacrifice. And the sacrifice of an innocent thing. An innocent animal in order to redeem man back. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that sacrifice leads to the shed of blood. Something has to die. So that is why throughout the Old Testament the priests were doing the sacrifice. Every season they were doing the sacrifice for man. But because the sacrifice of the Old Testament was not sufficient enough. When we come to the New Testament John chapter number 3 verse 16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus had to come and make a permanent atonement for the sin of man. It is because of you and me. So that was the redemption that Jesus had to do for us. So he came to we came on earth to fulfill that. So when the time for fulfilling this had come, 
kakati chino echisere cho kutukiriza chino bechatu he had to go and be hanged on the cross yalina okugenda na wanikibwa kwa because the bible says sin is every man who is hanged on the cross kubanga bible yegamba ntye chibicha buli muntu yeno ya wanikidwa kumsala so he had to be hanged on the cross yalia ino kuwanikibwa kumsala in order to redeem mankind alioka tununula alioka tuloko just like there was a serpent hanged on the cross Ngawe in the wilderness that every man that was not well had to look unto the cross the serpent and was healed here we see Jesus hanged on the cross because of us so, so when the time for the sacrifice came the permanent and the sufficient sacrifice they had to arrest Jesus when they arrested Jesus people tried to fight Peter tried to stop it from happening Jesus said leave it this has to happen it was a painful death that Jesus cried in Gethsemane and he said God said father take this cup away from me but not my will let it be done praise the Lord Jesus Amen. because he wanted to do a permanent atonement for us for you and for me so he was taken on the cross the bible said they wiped his back they had to beat him and meat was coming out the flesh was coming out because they, they were using a metal rod to wipe him and blood was coming out they had to take him on the cross and nail him on the cross they nailed his hand and his feet and blood was coming out the bible say bible they had to crown him with a, a thorn with a crown of thorn and they pressed it harder so that it enters the, head, the skin and blood was coming out because the atonement was already taking place he had to go through that for the atonement of you and me they had to pierce his side the Bible said blood and water came out and in all this process people were mocking at him people were laughing at him and when they took him on the cross they put him in the middle of the two of, of, of two because according to the Roman tradition any man who has a bigger sin any man who has a bigger crime has to be put in the middle so it means Jesus had a bigger crime than all others so they put him on the cross and in the middle and shoot Surely by that time he was carrying a lot of sin because he was carrying all our sin on the cross of Calvary praise the Lord Jesus so why he was put in the middle the Bible says both sides had to Criminals. Some Bibles call them robbers. Others call them thugs. Others call them thieves. Others just call them criminals. We don't know which one is right, but it seems they had a lot of crimes committed. So they had to put them aside. And one of the criminals looked at him and railed at him and said, if you are the Christ, save yourself and save us also. 
This was mocking Jesus. And the Bible says, another one rebuked the friend and said, keep quiet. Don't you fear God. Don't you fear God. For so indeed, we, we deserve what we are going through. But this man has done nothing wrong. And the Bible says he turned to Jesus. And he said, Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Today I will be with you in paradise. Praise the Lord Jesus. This was a very wonderful redemption. And I believe this was the first man to benefit from Jesus on the cross. This was the very first man to benefit from Jesus' death. Because he realized that there was Jesus despite of his situation. He was also beaten. He was nailed on the cross. He was, I don't know what had happened to him. But, I, but according to the Roman tradition, they might have beaten him seriously. But he was still talking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four things that we learn from this man. And I want us to write it down. Number one, this man singled himself out. He singled himself out from every people that were mocking at Jesus. Even the fellow criminal was mocking at Jesus. Everyone down was mocking at Jesus. The soldiers were beating him. Everyone around were mocking at him. But this man, out of very many people, he came out and he said, this man has done nothing wrong. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are to be redeemed, there are times that you are not supposed to follow the crowd. There are times you are not supposed to follow the family trend. Because probably your family members are Muslims. Probably they believe in some traditions. But you, are, but you are to take yourself out of the crowd. And you say, no, there is something unique about this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are dying because we are following the crowd. We want to do things because the rest are doing. We want to do things just the way others are doing. But if you are to be redeemed, you have to realize Lies. And you take yourself out of no that. Furume, Chibina. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes, we are forever, and you we. begin following the truth. No, and you stand on the truth. No, this is the man that stood on the truth and said this man has done nothing wrong this man is God he asked the friend don't you fear God this is Christ the rest were saying this is not Christ but he, him alone he came and said this is God hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the name of the Lord number two this man acknowledged his he acknowledged his mistake. He acknowledged his crime. He said, For us, we deserve the punishment we are going through because we are criminals we have done so many wrong things we deserve what we are going through he acknowledges sin most of the time people don't want to acknowledge their sin people don't want to acknowledge what they have done people because of pride and ego they don't want to 
acknowledge what they have done. But it is important for a child of God to acknowledge what he has done. And you know very well that what you have done is not right. Praise the Lord Jesus. So this man came out and acknowledged. He said for me I deserve what I am going through. Praise the Lord Jesus. He acknowledged his mistake. Number three. This man believed in the power and redemption of Jesus. Hallelujah. He believed Jesus is able to redeem him. He believed that Jesus is the Christ. He believed in Jesus. Despite of his condition. Because sometimes we are too much surrounded by circumstances. And we feel like probably God is not with me. Because of the thing you are going through. But one thing that stood out for this man. Is that he believed. He believed. Friends I want to tell you today. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what is around you. Believe God. Believe God when things are good. Believe God when things are bad. This man was on the cross. But he believed God. While he was on the cross. He believed in Jesus. Hallelujah. He believed that he can redeem him. He believed that he can save him. Let us believe God. Even when things are not good. Believe God. When business has collapsed. Believe God. When you lost your job. Continue to believe God. When you see no hope. Believe God. When the pastors have given you the deadline. Believe God. When things look to be disorganized. Continue to believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when you are on the sick bed. Believe God. I don't know how many minutes. This man was remaining with today. But still he believed God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At least you are still alive. You have a mouth to confess. You can still speak something out. This man was on the cross. But he believed God. Even when he was on the cross. Number four and the last one. The man repented in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said number one. He singled himself out. Number two. He acknowledged his weakness and his sin. And then number three. He believed God. And then number four. He repented in prayer. It is one thing to believe God. And it is one thing. To acknowledge your weakness. But let me tell you, most of the people acknowledge their weaknesses. But they don't repent of it. It is painful that most of the people they know they have sinned. They, no, they know they have done wrong. But they don't repent on it. Actually life continues. Actually they begin talking about others. These people are talking about me. These people are condemning me. You personally have you repented before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So many times because of our pride and ego we begin to say we are human. We are human. I mean, we are human. Don't you have sin? Don't you sin? Hallelujah. There is no one perfect. Some of those words, there is no one perfect. We are all human. Well, yes, we know you are human. But acknowledge your sin. 
and repent of it. Praise the Lord. Acknowledge your sin and repent of it. Don't keep on going back to it because you're human. God has given you his spirit that keeps warning you. Don't praise yourself we're human. We are we human. So as we look at this man, the Bible says he turned to Jesus and he said, Lord, he said, Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knew he wasn't right. He knew he had done so many things wrong. He knew he couldn't qualify for the kingdom. And he had to ask. He had to pray to Jesus. And he said, remember me. I want us today to ask God remember me. Remember my family. Remember what I have gone through. Remember my life. Remember my family. Remember our nation. Remember me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. While the man was on the cross, he said, Jesus, remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us, there are things inside us that has affected our life that we cannot inherit the kingdom. Even while we talk about the kingdom this year, there are so many things that are hindering you from seeing that kingdom. Praise the Lord Jesus. Some people are just lazy. Some people, the enemy has stolen away their knowledge. Some people, their ministry are dead. Today, say God, remember me. Remember my ministry. Restore me again. Restore me, Lord. Because he is able to do it. When we look at this scripture, the Bible says instantly, immediately, Jesus says, today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, today, you will be with me in paradise. Our God can respond to our situation. Jesus responded to him and he said today you will be with me in paradise. I pray for you that today God should change some things about you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that today God should help you to experience his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus answered him yes, and, and said today you will be with me in paradise. Listen to me child of God. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how tired you are. I don't know how things are going around you. I don't know things that has been stressing you. You. I don't know how you are squeezed in the corner and you have no option. But you are remaining with that one option. Just to pray to him and say, Lord, remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, remember me. That is what this man did. Why you still have opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord? The Bible says those that calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. You have opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord for the salvation of your life, for the redemption of your family, for the redemption of our nation Uganda. Uganda and for so many things that are happening we have opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord today we are going to call upon his name and I say Lord remember me remember my marriage remember my health remember my ministry remember my church remember our nation remember me let's stand up on our Praise the Lord. 
Every time I read about this man, he stands out for me. How he call unto Jesus. I don't know how he had this, this revelation about Jesus. But he said, Lord, remember me. I want us to come to Jesus today. I say, Lord, remember me. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but remember me. Remember me. Remember me. I want to experience your health. I want to experience your deliverance. I want to experience your redemption. I want to experience your salvation. Remember me, Lord. Remember my walk. I have not walked well enough. I have not preached well enough. I have not done well enough. But remember me. Remember me. Remember my life. Remember my family. Remember me, Lord. Remember me, Lord. Remember me. Somebody pray. Do you to speak to Jesus? Say, Lord, remember me. I am not perfect, but remember me. I want to benefit from your death. I want to benefit from your atonement. I want to benefit from your crucifixion. Remember me, Lord. Remember my life, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Change my life, Lord. Renew my ministry. Renew my family. Renew my relationship. Renew my love again. Renew my health. Renew me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Renew me, Lord. While in pain, while in pain, the man turned to Jesus and said, Master, Remember me. Remember me. When you come into your kingdom, remember me, Lord. Remember my life. Remember me. Jesus answered him. And said today. You will be with me in paradise. You will be with me in paradise. It was a one time change in his life. That single prayer that you are going to pray today. Can change things about you. Can change things about your family. Can change things about your life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Do it, O God. Do it, Lord. Remember me. Remember me. 